Spring wiggles her toes one by one, testing the sweet air and stretches grassy fingertips up to the sky. A deep sigh of letting go, the creak of an ancient oak, well rested and contented with roots and sleepy soil. She knocks thrice on the cool, damp earth with her ancient hands, awakening dormant seeds. Sunlight peers out tentatively from the clouds. He steps one foot out, followed by another, reassured by the gentle giggle of the earth as he caresses her curves. He dapples through the willow tree, tickling the toes of a grumpy old hare. Winter looks upon them, weary and weather-worn. His feet ache and his back burns ice from the load he bears. Lie down, coos earth. Rest your heavy head and come back another day. Spring has sprung at winter's end. Astara is upon us and I wanted to share a few simple ways that you could celebrate the coming of spring. The first thing I always suggest, because it's the easiest and actually the best, is to just simply go for a walk. You can connect with the season here fully and look for signs of spring. It's still rather cold and frosty where I am and we did have snow just last week, but I was really glad to see the daffodils standing proud and the spring growth coming up very slowly, but still surely. Something I like to do during spring is make a herbal infusion to support my liver and kidneys and have a bit of a spring clean from the inside. Cleavers are talked about as a weed, but like a lot of weeds, they actually have some great properties. They're a diuretic and are great for helping with the kidneys, the liver, to relieve swelling and help with the lymphatic system. So really good for starting spring. Uh, so I took some of the spring growth and took it back with me to make an infusion. I also had some dried nettle and dandelion that I gathered last year, which have similar properties. And although it's a bit weird to mix dry and fresh plants, I did it anyway and I put it into a cold glass of water and left it in the fridge overnight to do a cold infusion. Personally, I prefer the taste of nettle cold rather than hot, but you could also make a tea. Just be sure to forage responsibly and be 100% sure of the plants you are taking to be as safe as possible. Another thing that you can do is to create an altar or space in your home to celebrate spring. Uh, this could be on a table, a window ledge, up on the wall, or if you can't do something really openly, you can just literally have a nice little candle somewhere or a flower or something that represents spring to you. So for my altar, I included a painting of a hair that I did, a spring bulb to represent the new growth. I also made a nest from twigs and dried flowers some candles and crystals that are pale in colour to signify the flowers that are coming up and I also put up some cards from this lovely druid tarot deck which show new life and growth. I wrote down an intention for the season and I put it in the egg to help it grow and it's just a really great place to see every time I walk past and remind myself that warmer days are coming and there is a lot to be hopeful about. So we are now in March, um, it's officially the end of February, uh, January and February tend to just feel like they go on and on forever so it's quite nice to have March here but still it's pretty cold, it's frosty, apparently it's going to snow next week so I think we've still got a lot of um, coldness and wintry, uh, winteriness left um, but it's March which means that we can start um, sowing seeds for the garden so that's what I'm going to do today, I'm really excited about it. Um, it just makes you feel like really hopeful that the warmth is coming and all the nice things are coming back. So I've started gathering like everything on this table, um, all sorts of stuff. So I've got like 
new seed trays. Um, I've also got loads of random ones that I've just gathered for ages. I've got like egg boxes, yogurt, pots, everything. Um, and this year I actually got plant labels for the first time because I always just try to write it on something like on cardboard or like whatever. It just gets like, it just gets wet and then it doesn't work. So finally I was like, okay, let's actually get these and do this properly. Um, and then I went through um, the seed box that I've got and I had a look through the things that I want to grow this year and, and kind of made notes on everything. Um, so I've got them out. There's quite a few things. I don't think I'm going to plant all of them today. Um, but we've got some different vegetables and salad and herbs and some flowers and things as well. And I also have two little fruit bushes. I got a blueberry bush and a raspberry bush yesterday, so I need to put them in a nice pot. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, yeah, I'm really excited, so let's just do it. This is the current chaos, um, but we are making good progress. I'm nearly done with all the seeds now. Um, I've just got them here on the windowsill because this is where um, it gets a lot of sun. So I've tried to be really conservative because um, I don't have like tons of space. It's a small garden, um, but I want to grow like different things. So I've got like different types of salad because they're easy to grow and I can even put them in pots and stuff. I've got like broccoli, cabbage, um, leek and um, some other things like that, lots of kale and things. Um. I also decided to plant a flower bed using the no dig method which involves setting cardboard down on the grass, watering it and then putting compost over the top of it and this is a really great thing that you can do in the garden if you don't want to dig things up which actually disrupts the soil quite a lot so no dig is a really good method and you can research it and find out a lot more about it and I didn't think it would work to plant directly into it. I did think that I was going to have to wait for it all to rot down but my mother who is just an expert gardener told me to do this so I listened. Uh, it's worked for her before. Uh, so I cut a hole in and loosened the grass a little bit and then I planted a few different flowers to start off my cottage garden. Here I used some slightly acidic soil, so I planted hydrangea, foxgloves and a rhododendron. If you plant rhododendron, just be absolutely certain that you are not planting the invasive ponticum variety, as this can be damaging to wildlife. You can also plant things in a pot on the windowsill or in a tiny garden, so don't be discouraged if you don't have a flower bed. You can definitely grow things really well in containers. Over time I will add in wildflower seeds as well as spring bulbs so I will have colour all throughout the year. This time of the year is all about celebrating sunshine, getting outside as much as possible and looking ahead to new growth and new possibilities. So plant a little seed on your windowsill and let the sun on your face and know that the days are getting longer and there are lots of good things to come. Thank you for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video. 
let me know in the comments how you are celebrating Astara this year.